Well, hello again, and welcome back to Following to Lee with Kevin East. I'm still Kevin East. So glad you're joining me on the podcast again this week. Uh, as I like to say every time, the whole purpose of this podcast is to inspire you to follow Jesus in such a way that it changes you. It changes the way that you live and the way that you lead, both at work and at home. That's my hope. So on this podcast, we drop new episodes every Monday. I get to talk to all different cool types of people. This week in the podcast, I'm talking to a famous guy's son. He's more than just a son, though. Now he's a dad. If you remember Dr. James Dobson, a lot of us listened to him or heard of him as we grew up. He's written a ton of books. Today I got to talk to his son, Ryan Dobson. Ryan kind of started his career after growing up as the son of James Dobson, speaking at all sorts of things, concerts, uh, festivals, uh, pregnancy centers, all sorts of things like that. You'll hear about it even as we talk today in the podcast. Then he wrote his first book called, uh, I think it's called Be Intolerant in 2003. He's written like five books since then. This guy was a joy and a fireball of energy to talk to today. If you're a parent who's like, what does it look like to parent kids today in our modern culture today? Um, and kind of uh, what that looks like, the struggles, the joys, the pains. Uh, just listen to this podcast interview. So again, thanks for being here. Here's my conversation with Ryan Dobson. Okay, so I have to start with this question, Ryan, That I, you know, because I, as I read about it, I was like, that's really intriguing. Um you talk about the state of marriage and parenting in such a way right now that we almost like need to lead a rebellion of sorts. Yep. And when mm. I think rebellion, I'm like, okay, gosh, what do you mean by that? So let me start with a softball question here for you. What, is it, what does that mean to lead a rebellion of sorts? Oh, my goodness. I, I appreciate you asking me that, Kevin. Our culture is so mean right now. Yeah. <clears throat> My wife and I are talking this morning. She's like, you know, do you care if I watch the news? Like, we say that to each other, and we don't watch, like, mainstream media. We watch, like, clips of news on other shows. And I was like, no, I don't care. And she's like, you're not watching much lately. Why? And I go, I just realized it's all designed to make me anxious. Yeah. It's all designed. And culture is mean. It's just, it's cruel. It's designed to antagonize, to divide. Everything is divisive. You know, no matter what the commercial is, Home Depot had a commercial that was so anti-relationship. It was a woman, you know, asking questions and they turned to the husband boyfriend character and he's got a plunger on his head doing this, you know, mm. and it's just little jabs everywhere. And we're saying, cut it out. Yeah. Like your home should be the greatest experience. And it's not for most people. Like I talk about how much I love being a parent and it's even weird coming out of my mouth because I say that and people cringe and they're like, how, how, oh my goodness. All I do is feel like a failure all the time. Yeah, We're just listening to the culture. You can change that within your home through kindness and gratitude. Oh my goodness. It's amazing. You know, I wonder if what, even as you say that, when I thought about uh, when the pandemic was first starting and everything's shutting down and, you know, all of a sudden this, some good news comes on, you know, and I, you hear about it online and you start watching these, and John Krasinski, I guess is his name. And yeah, and yeah. you kind of look forward oh. to each episode, man. It's like, finally some good news. I guess that's yes. what you're saying, man. It's like, it's yes. like finally something good to watch as opposed to just something that makes you anxious all the yep. time. I tell you what, Shanti Feldhan is a great author. She's written a ton of great books. She's got an amazing book called The Good News About Marriage. Now, I bet you've heard this. I'll bet you've heard that 50% of marriages end in divorce, regardless of if you're a believer or not a believer. Right. Right? Yep. yep. We've all heard that. I yep. quoted it for years. Shanti called me and was like, hey, man, it's not true. That was based off a study in the 70s that said, if trends continue, then this could happen. First marriages have about a 75% success rate. Wow. Now, is 25% 20, is bad? Sure. But it's so much better than 50%. <laughs> I mean, you, we've been telling kids for decades, like, hey, doesn't matter what you believe. It's a flip of the coin whether you get divorced or not. And we wonder why divorce is going downhill. Yeah. Marriage is amazing. Your marriage can be amazing. If you'll stop looking at culture, start looking at Jesus as your model of kindness. Be kind to each other. Yeah. I'm telling you, people are so mean to each other because culture trains that you can be kind to your spouse all the time and it will revolutionize your relationship. Yeah. You know, I, I remember years ago I had some, I worked at a camp and I had these young guys in my cabin. One was uh, Dr. Tony Evans' son, uh -huh. um, Jonathan. One was uh, the late Steve Farrar's son, uh, a guy named John. And so now you're another son of a of a famous guy who's written a lot of books, a lot of things like that on parenting. 
let me ask you that age old question. Like, okay, what was it like for you? And tell me that relationship with your dad. You obviously still work with him today. So it's gotta be good, I guess. Oh yeah. 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 I love my parents. Um, and I don't work for my dad, but we did a show with Dr. Jeff Myers at airs. Uh, it just aired recently on family talk about the camp summit ministries. Um, and I worked as his vice president for, I think seven years. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I did co-hosting with him on the radio. Yeah, we have a great relationship. Um, I, I think there's a lot of things. What's it like? Uh, I didn't know we were famous until I was in the sixth grade, and then everything changed literally like that. I mean, it yeah. was it was a light switch. Um, huh. I just didn't know. We had a substitute teacher that came into class, and she was taking roles. She said, Ryan Dobson. I said, here. And she goes, oh, like Dr. Dobson. And I go, well, yeah, that's my dad. And she goes, oh, honey, I know you wish he was your dad. <laughs> and uh, I remember thinking so many things at once, like, why do you know who my dad is? And why, do you, why would I wish he was my dad? Why do you not believe he's my dad? You know, that was just an instant. And then everybody in class was like, no, no, that's his dad. That's his dad. Mm. And I was like, whoa, why does mm. everyone know who my dad is? Yeah. And the next day, she brought in a bunch of books for me to bring home for my dad to autograph and then bring back to her. Yeah, which I there was you strange. go. Strange. Well, you know, uh, I, and then I'll, I'll be honest, the gates opened at that point. Like then apparently it was okay for everyone to let me know they all knew. And yeah. <laughs> it was morning drive time. So most of the carpools that drove to my Christian school were listening to him on the way to school. Oh, wow. So it well, was. I, I asked partly because, you know, I, I'm not at all, you know, famous like your dad, but I've got a passion for Jesus and I've got a passion yeah. to really help yeah. people follow him, to make an impact with others. And I have five kids that are watching me do mm -hmm. this, right? And so totally. when I think about your relationship with your dad today and the fact that he grew up writing about it, speaking about it, and y'all are on speaking terms, that's a good thing. <laughs> Give me some advice here is a son who's now a dad, who's still a son, how can... I and others have a great relationship with our kids. Okay. Uh, I can tell you from my experience, yeah. and mine was a little different, but I think it it kind of overemphasizes some of the tendencies dads might have. So I'm adopted, and which means until my son was born, I've never known another person I'm biologically related to. Hmm. And that's interesting because you see kids that look like their parents and there's that thing like, I wonder if I ever look like someone. And it wasn't like a longing for another family, but when my wife was pregnant, I just couldn't believe it. There was going to be someone like me in mm -hmm. the world, someone I was connected to and we would mm -hmm. be like each other and he would like skateboarding and I would, I love skateboarding and we would be, <laughs> you know, all, we, it would just be he and I against the world, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. What I didn't realize is when he was a little boy, all I was doing is saying, the only time you're good is if you like what I like. Mm. I wasn't looking for who he was, who God wanted him to be, who his unique individualism was. I was just focusing on any trait I could find of myself in him. And for a son, it's so rejecting. Mm. It really is. And I was also a fear-based parent. Having a dad that's a parenting expert... I just assumed I would be a failure at it. I mean, how can I live up to this model? You know, the books, the radio programs, you know, all the things. I'm never going to be good enough, and therefore I'm going to fail. And if I fail, you know, the world will crash down. And because of that, I was a bad, bad parent when my son mm. was young. I really was. Mm. And people, when I say that, they're like, oh, Ryan. I'm like, listen, I do this for a living. I know what good parenting is. I know what bad parenting is. I was not a good one. I was fear-based, constantly critiquing, constantly coaching up. And I have learned to do the opposite. If you mm. want to get along with your kids, and here's the truth, this works with spouses. Uh, I don't say to do this in the outside world necessarily. It depends on the relationship and where you're at. And any positive thing someone does in our household, they get thanked for it. Mm. Anything. I don't care what it is. Do your own laundry, get thanked for it. You mm -hmm. know, uh, My son, he's 15. He took the trash out the other day. And I was like, you know, I look over and he's pulling up the little plastic handles in the, in yeah, the bag yeah. and he's tying it. And I'm like, what is he doing? And he picks it up and, and I go, what are you doing? And he goes, taking out the trash. <laughs> and I was like, hey man, thanks. I really appreciate that. And he's yeah. like, okay. You know, now he's taller than me and he's bigger than me at 15. And I went up and told Laura, I'm like, Lincoln just took the trash out with being asked. And she's like, seriously? And she went downstairs. She's like, hey man, thank you. I appreciate that. That really helps out. And he was yeah. like, okay. But we do that with everything. Yeah. And I'm telling you, 
this is what I tell guys because it's really hard for dads to do that. They say things like, well, the world's hard. You got to train them up. And it's like, the world is hard. They'll figure that out on their own. You don't need to be. Yeah. This yeah. is what I say. If you're at a job, you're a staff meeting Monday morning, your boss comes in, all the employees are there and he looks over and he goes, Kevin, I just got to stop for a minute. I just need you to know how much I appreciate that you're on time every day. I'm telling you, I come in, you're here every day. You're never late. I know if there's something important happening, Kevin is going to be there. I count on you. I appreciate you. It makes me calm in the mornings because sometimes I can't make it in. And I know you're here every day on time. Are you ever going to be late to mm. any job ever again? Right. Yeah. No, because nobody does that. Right. Nobody thanks people. Yep. Nobody does that. It's bananas. I tell, man, I call managers like of places that I order from and I'll go, Hey, can I speak to the manager? The manager gets on, you hear by their voice. Hello? Like another complaint. And I go, Hey man, I was working with uh, Steve and he was so helpful. Like he brought our food up and he had extra stuff in there. I just want you to know, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> oh, thank you. No, no one ever calls and thanks us. Oh, I just want you to know, Steve was so great. I really appreciate him coming here. Thank you. I do this. My life has changed exponentially. Yeah. People are like, well, how do you discipline your kids? How do you get them to do? Th we don't really argue because mm. you don't need to. I'm telling you, you don't need to. You got to look at what's what's required like yeah. what's the most important thing and i'm telling you it's the relationship because their life is going to be hard they're going to fail they're going to go through hard times they've got to know mom and dad man whatever you do i might be disappointed i might grieve i might be sad but love you oh my goodness there's nothing in the world i want to do but love you nothing in the world i want to do but support you you know, you're right, right? We, we, we live in a culture right now that's so foreign. We look like weirdos when we do it. We were talking yep. before we started recording that of our common love of a store called Shields, right? This yeah. outdoor store. And I was telling you, I call over the manager. I think this place is unbelievable. Yes. And even in talking to people at times, it's so foreign to just speak grace into people. And oh. I love what you're saying because you're just speaking grace into your to kids do. by just saying yeah. thanks. Okay, so you have it, teenagers. It's with, I'm telling you, Kevin, though, here's the thing. It's... Yeah. it's and, okay, here's the opposite of that, right? Here's the yeah. opposite. It's also telling them when you fail. And if you do it to them or to your spouse, apologizing. Mm. So, ugh. All right, this is super embarrassing. I'm yeah. s uh, okay, it's embarrassing because it's so <laughs> recent. Okay. Uh, I have... A bunch of different jobs. I do lots of things to make a living. When the pandemic hit, I mean, the whole world went upside down. So I do private fundraising. I record podcasts. I'm a producer. I do my own podcast. I'm out there. I'm hustling. And yeah. I love it. Yeah. But I made a grievous error in one of my jobs about three weeks ago. <laughs> well, hey, at least it wasn't a month ago. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I can right. see myself on camera because I'm turning red and I yeah. rarely do that, but it was so embarrassing and it could have cost me my job. Oh, it really, it, it was a big deal. And I was just telling my wife like, oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just don't know what I'm going to do. And I told my kids not knowing the outcome. I got to go now call my, call my boss. I got to go meet with him, tell him the error I made and let the chips fall where they may. And I told my kids and it was like, it was the most vulnerable thing to tell a 10 year old and a 15 year old. Like I blew it. So, and I told them everything that I did, like it wasn't on purpose. It was a total mistake, but there were things I could have done that could have ensured it didn't happen. I mean, it was a big deal. And I told them, uh, and then I went and met my boss and he was so gracious and so kind and it was a contract. And I said, I'm going to return all the money I got for this contract. And he said, are you sure? And I said, yes, it's the right thing to do. And he goes, is your family okay with this? And I said, they will be. It's all right. I said, I appreciate this job. I appreciate the future work that you're giving me. But I really made a big mistake. And I think this is the right thing to do. And he goes, okay, all right. And I was so happy leaving that meeting. And I went home and told my kids, I told my wife, told my kids what happened. And I told him, I go, oh, he was so gracious. He was so kind and we've worked it out and I'm going to continue my job. And they were like, oh, that's so good. And Laura goes, and? And I go, <laughs> and what? And she goes, what were the consequences? 
And I was like, oh, I had to give back all the money I made that week. And they were like, oh, you did? And I go, yes, but it was the right thing to do. There yeah. are consequences for your actions. And I go, here's the deal. I told my 10 year old, I, I go, I wish there was a lie I could have told to get out of it. There wasn't, I really want to be out of this situation, but I have to go and meet with him. And I have to tell him what I did. And I'm just being super honest and vulnerable with my children, but then they know I'm 51 years old. I've been doing podcasting before iTunes was released. Hmm. Like I've done this for ever and I blew it in a big way and I could have lost my job. Praise the Lord. I didn't, but there was a massive consequence and it tells them for the rest of your life, bro, you're going to fail. It's yeah. terrible. It totally stinks, but you will. It's yeah. okay. You can, you, it's just not the end of the world. You fa- and they, cause they fail when they're children. Yeah. That's the thing parents need to know. Kids fail all the time, all the time. It's just the norm. It's all the time failure. You got to be there for them. You got to let them go through it, but just be like, yep, totally. We fail. It stinks. Oh my goodness. Right. Consequences. Woo. It stinks so bad. You know, parents all the time, they, you know, it's funny you mention it. Parents all the time. I I hear from them like, how, how much should I tell them about mistakes that I made or things like that? And, and I age appropriate, age appropriate for sure. But I I think we don't realize the value of being human to our kids and letting them know, we know we're human. We're not perfect. That there's value because what you just did with your kids is just showed them what it looks like to experience consequences of actions and then still say, okay, Lord, I trust you. Let's move on. And the world didn't yeah. end. I, I got to be honest, though, I, and I'm telling every parent out there, it is rough. Yeah. Don't think it's not. Like, it's so rough doing that with your children. It really is. But mm. you can. I, I want to go back to one other thing that's rough, too. Yeah. Uh, when I figured out how bad of a parent I was, my son was about eight. My daughter was about three. And I took the step. I went to therapy with my eight year old and heard how bad of a parent I was. That that's definitely in my parenting experience, not in life, but in my parenting experience, it's definitely the worst thing I've ever gone through as a parent. I've never felt worse ever than that experience. Hmm. And I wouldn't take away one iota of that experience because it changed me. It changed my relationship with my son and it showed him I'm willing to make the change. And I did. And at 15, and it's been seven years, Yeah. but we'll probably watch a movie tonight. We mm-hmm. do it about three or four times a week. We play mm-hmm. video games together. I just bought an Xbox. Oh, I'm so bad. <laughs> but he wants me to play with him. Yeah, that's right. And he won't always. He yeah. won't always want dad to play with him. But yeah. while he does, bro, I get this relationship. I get to. I don't have to. But I get it, yeah. and I'm so psyched for it. In Following to Lead, we talk about following Jesus each week. And as we follow Jesus, how it changes us, the way that we live and the way that we lead. It's what I say each time as I open up this podcast. It's one thing to talk about it. It's something completely different to live it out. So I want to tell you about this ministry I get to lead called Mentoring Alliance. Mentoring Alliance is a Christ-centered ministry that supports children and families in the communities that we have the privilege of serving. We say it like this here, that we exist to mobilize godly people into the lives of kids and families to provide tangible help and eternal hope. We do summer camps, after school programs, and we connect godly people as mentors one-on-one with at-risk kids in these communities. You know, if you're passionate about helping kids and families from all different parts of communities, I'd invite you to join us here at Mentoring Alliance. You can find us at thementoringalliance.com. If you'd be willing to help support it financially, that would be great as well. You can do that at thementoringalliance.com slash donate. Again, that's thementoringalliance slash donate. Well, let, let's let's shift the conversation here. I, w- I want to get your perspective on this. Maybe some parents have heard of a concept of moral relativism. Yeah. You know, you've been speaking on parenting a long time. You've written numbers of books. Um, talk yep. about moral relativism and how can how can you help equip parents to be prepared to help our kids through this cultural yeah. reality that we live in right now? Basically, moral relativism is the belief that uh, right and wrong at core don't exist. Truth is relative. What's right for you may not be right for me, but you can have your own truth and you can speak your own truth and you can identify your own truth and that's right for you. And it doesn't have to be right for me because truth is 
relative. It's moral relativism. Uh, and as I speak that, I'm sure everyone listening is like, oh, I can think of 400 situations I've heard on the news and in the media lately that all speak to that. Yes, mm -hmm. that's exactly right. Um, okay, I'm gonna give you two. One yeah. is tell, tell your kids the truth all the time. Tell your kids the truth. Hmm. Um, I will tell you what my parents did. And this is the other break that I want to give parents. Like I interview experts for a living on my podcast and my dad and mom, as amazing as they are, looked for any help they could get when we were growing up, any extra things someone else was doing that could input in the way they wanted. They were trying to get any help they can get. They didn't think they were the end all be all know all. They were like, what could help? Could this help? Yes. Let's do that. And they yeah. found a camp called Summit Ministries in Colorado. In fact, I work for, I, I have contract work with Summit. Yeah. It's a Christian worldview camp. I was 17 when I went. It, it absolutely transformed my life. Everything I do today was based on the things I learned my very first summer at Summit. It's a Christian worldview camp. I will say there's a lot of classroom time. I have yet to meet a parent that regrets sending their child. Hmm. Here's the truth. Kevin, I wasn't a bad kid. I yeah. wasn't, you know, it's not that I didn't go through rebellious periods in my life, but at that point in my life, high school, I was not a bad kid. I wasn't rebellious. I just didn't really care about a lot of things. And growing up in a family with a superstar, his light shines very, very bright. And it's not something my parents did or do. But when you have a light that bright in your family, you just assume yours won't be as bright. That's just a natural thing to assume. It's not a bad parenting thing. Yeah. And so I didn't really think I was going to be that big of a deal in life. And I got to Summit and the leaders there told me, you have a purpose in life. That's right. God created you for a reason and you can change the world. Yeah. And I was like, really? And they said, yes. And it totally changed me. Yeah. And the guys that come today, Sean McDowell, Josh McDowell's son, by the way, it's Dr. Sean McDowell. By the I love Sean. He's one of my good friends. I'm such a huge fan. Dr. Double Masters, Sean wow. McDowell. Wow. I guess I have to there, salute him twice then, you know? Bro, he's so, <laughs> he is so smart and yeah. he's so winsome and every single person there loves him kids. They want the kids with questions. They want strong kids to get stronger. They want kids that are like, I don't know about this. I want, I have questions about this. I keep hearing all these things that make sense. And I, I want to know these things. It's the two weeks. Huh. Oh man. It's amazing. It's I'm not, they don't pay me to do that. It's summit.org. That's their website. It yeah. changed every single, here's how Okay, Kevin, I took my skateboard when I went. I was so mad. My par my parents made me go. There was no choice. Yeah. I just kicked and screamed. Uh, it changed me so much. It set me on fire so much. I went home and I talked five of my friends into going back with me the very same summer. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I've been going back almost every year for 35 years. So, it, I mean, my parents would tell you the same thing. They're, they could not be more... They said... The price they would pay knowing now what they what it changed me, yeah. there's no price they wouldn't pay for it. It's so, so cool. I guess what you're saying, even how Summit helped you then, and what you're saying about parents tell your kids the truth, it's recognizing yeah. this, again, culture we live in and speaking truth into them consistently so yeah. they begin to understand what truth is then. Um, oh, yeah, totally. How about, you know, you've been... Uh, Best advice, maybe, might be a question for you. Because you've been around parenting forever, it, what is the best advice maybe you've gotten or that you might give parents? What would you say? Uh, the best parents have the best marriages, the best parents. And if you're not married, if you're a single parent, by all means, totally. I completely understand that. The best parents work on themselves a lot. Hmm. They take the time, they make the investment, and they work on themselves. Every And here's the thing. I don't say that at the expense of your family. I don't say that for you to be selfish. I mean, I was so, it's so funny now because I used to be such an angry person, like, oh, it's crazy. And I remember apologizing to my son for raising my voice and the look on his face was like, yep, heard that one before. And I was like, oh, oh, I'm a liar. I've said this too many times. And mm. I just did the work. I'm telling you, my losing the anger, figuring out where it came from, it made everything better. My marriage is better. My parenting is better. I feel better. My work is better. My preaching is better. My writing is better. Oh my goodness. Working on myself worked. Did it cost a lot? Oh brother, I'm telling you the investment. I look back on the investment and I'm like, oof. And then I look at my life, bro, 
Make the investment. If you want your kids to be good at money, figure out your finances. You want your kids to be good communicators? Learn how to communicate with your spouse. Yeah. Like, uh, what happened? Something happened with Laura today, and she was she apologized for what was it? Uh, oh yeah, I had a guest in studio yesterday, and they wanted to use the bathroom, and I ran upstairs real quick, and it was a total mess, and I was like cleaning up, and she was like, "Oh, I'm totally sorry," and I was like, "Ooh, no, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. I'm not mad at you." And because here's the deal, yes, she normally does do that. Was it an inconvenience? Totally. But I don't know what she had yesterday morning. I don't know where she was going and what was going on. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I just moved trash cans and stuff. It took a couple extra seconds. I was a little extra stressed. No big deal. Yeah. I didn't need to be like, you know what? It really was an inconvenience for me. And you normally do that. And it's really your job. <laughs> and I work really hard. And I'm a man. And yeah. Pfft. By the yeah. way, what good is it going to do me? Yeah, that's true. How about was it going to make her feel better? Yeah, no. How about with no. your kids? You know, you have teenagers. I have teenagers. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've heard it said, you know, kids will listen to everything. You know, they'll tell you everything if you listen to everything in a sense. What, what, do, you, <laughs> what do you think that means? Kids will tell totally. you everything if you listen to everything. What do you mean by what yes. does that mean to you? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I have heard 8 million conversations about Minecraft, Fortnite, uh, drama amongst junior hires. Yeah. Uh, about unicorns and fairies. I've heard eight, you know, sparkly. My daughter likes anything shiny, sparkly, and pink. Uh, unicorns, uh, squish, squish mellows, the big pillows that you. I yeah, know yeah. so much about squishy toys. All my son's drama. I hear all of it. Yeah. And, ooh, there are some times where I'm like, oh my goodness, if you tell me another Minecraft story, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Except that he knows I'm there to listen to him. So when, when my kids got lonely during the pandemic, they came and told us. I mean, like they tell us everything. Yeah. I know about their friends' parents' marriages. I know what their friends are going through. I'm, dude, I know everything. It's crazy what your kids will tell you, but you got to listen. Yeah. Here's the truth. It's what I said earlier. You've had this such a short window. Like people always say that, but they don't tell you what to do in that window. Here's what you do. You get to have a good relationship or a bad relationship with your kids. You don't have to. You could just farm it out. Get a nanny. Go play golf. You know, join a book club. You could farm it out. You can't, but you get a short window and you get, like if you were going to coach someone, if you said, hey, uh, we've got this <clears throat> baseball player. I don't know anything about baseball. I've got a baseball player and we need a coach for him. You would ask a lot of questions. What position does he play? He's first baseman. Well, first baseman wears a weird glove and they're usually tall. So what <laughs> coach do, what's the best first base coach for this person? What personality does he have? Did he have a good dad or a mean dad? Does he want to be yelled at? Does he like to be, you know, pumped up and screamed at? Or is he a soft touch? You got to figure all these things out. As a parent, you get to do that with your kids. Yeah. Don't make them figure you out. Yeah. Don't make them figure out what your parents did and didn't do to you and how it hurt your feelings or what worked with them. And now figure your own unique child. And by the way, your kids are going to be so different. You yeah. get two. I don't care if they're twins or triplets. They will be so unique. Figure it out. Get learn. By the way, here's how you figure that part out. The get versus half. Uh, remember the last time you lost a job and you went, oh no, and then you got a new job and you're like, yay, I get to go to work because at your last job, maybe the day before you, you lost it, you're like, oh my goodness, I have to go to work. Uh, no, no. When you lose a job and then you get a new one, you're like, I get to go to work today. Yeah. You're there early. You're excited. That's how you are with parenting. Yeah. I get because the results and the rewards, I'm telling you, when I figured out how bad of a parent I was and I was wrong about virtually everything I was doing and I got to learn to be totally different than the person I thought I wanted to be, I learned everything new. I had to fail at everything for so long and just fail and fail and fail and apologize and go again. But the relationship I have with my kids today, bro, I'll brag all day. Yeah, It's so cool. Yeah, Just I'm telling you, you get it. And you do that with your spouse. You get to be married to that That's amazing, right. unique, wonderful person. You get to figure out who they need you to be so they can be the best they can be because that's when your relationship just wow. Well, I tell you, I, I, I love seeing your energy and your joys. You talk about it. I, you know, you have kids. I've got five kids. 
I Woo. love being able to tell nice. them, I, I get to be your dad. I get to hang out yes. like you. Tell I, them, I, I love being your parents. Yes, that I, will change your relationship. I I've learned so much about Pokemon and about Beyblades and about all yes. sorts of random things. Beyblades, right? And, oh my gosh. But I just love being their parent. I love hearing a guy like you say, man, Kevin, I messed up everything because I... Everything. When we talk to parents a lot, there's so many people living in that place of, I'm terrible. I had, I had a mom call me this week in tears. For sure. And she's like, yep. hey, I, she sent me a message through uh, Instagram. She's like, Look, I want to talk to you about it. I'm, a, I'm a foster parent or I want to be a foster parent. And just in tears, literally, Ryan. So totally. let me kind of, I want to ask you one last question about this because to her and to so many, she's just living in failure. And so yep. let, me, oh. let me ask you one last question because I know we need to get off here. But if you were to talk to a parent... Mm. Somebody listening who's at the very end of their rope. Yep. What yep. do you tell them? Okay. Uh, I'm going to tell them something. I'm going to give you a resource too. And this is what I love. I, it's not my resource. I don't think I've given any of mine out because yeah. there are so many amazing, smart people. One, no, you're not. You're not. Oh, you're just not. You're not failing. You're mm. not. The Lord shows you specifically and uniquely for this time. You feel that way. I get it. Uh, you can start by getting off social media. It was designed to make you feel bad about yourself. So just if you're on all the time, you're feeling bad about yourself. Mm -hmm. So ditch it for a while. Take a little sabbatical. You don't have to like go so extreme or whatever. Um, there's a book by a guy named Paul Tripp called mm. Parenting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's called 14 Gospel Principles That Will Radically Transform Your Family. I might have the number wrong, but I'm telling you, that book was so revolutionary. It was so revolutionary. I started feeling like a better parent. And here's another one you can do too. Oh, this will be this is so crazy. So I'm writing a book called Rebel Parenting. It'll be out, I hope, next year. But there's one of the chapters called Magic Words Don't Exist, dot, 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 mm. except they do. And here's what I'm going to tell you. There's a negative voice in your head. This is the problem. There's a negative voice in your head. It might be your, your parents' voice. It might be your former spouse's voice. It might be an old boyfriend. It might be an aunt, whatever. It might be your own. You just might be self-critical. I am. I'm yeah. terrible at this stuff. But that voice is overpowering. And you've listened to it for a long time and you started believing it. Yeah. You got to start saying the opposite. Here's the truth. I started telling my kids how much I loved being their parent when I didn't love being their parent. Not because they're bad, because I was bad. I didn't like being a parent because I knew I was a failure. I saw the look in my children's eyes. I made them cry. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, I knew I was a failure because I was a failure and I didn't like being a failure. Mm. But I started telling them, I started looking at my kids going, man, I love being your dad. It's such a pleasure being your dad. It's so special being your dad. I love being your dad. And I lied. Oh my goodness, did I lie? Because I didn't. I didn't believe it at all. But I kept lying to myself and I kept lying to my kids. People are going to freak out when I'm saying that. <laughs> but I did it. I did it so long. And I started being better at it because I kept telling myself that. I started trying to be better at it because I kept telling myself, I love being a parent. I love being a parent. And I'm telling you, Kevin, today, my son is 15. It's been seven years since I was an abject, complete, total failure at this. I do. I can't fake this. Huh. I'm so blessed. I can't believe it. I'm so. I mean, it was only through the supernatural power of, of the Holy Spirit and yeah. Jesus. It was only through scripture. It was only through prayer. It was only through allowing the Lord to change me and, and understanding I'm a sinner and I'm broken and I, I'm not perfect and I need to learn. But doing that, I love, I love, uh, the saddest thing in my life right now is that my kids are going to leave someday and I don't I know, know what to do. I know. I'm that, already sad. That, that's when you want to be like the but people on TV so and like cool. build a compound, you know, and they all live around the same area. Like, oh, oh surely we could do that. So, <laughs> Bro, what I love it. So there's a, yes, of course I would do that. Will you please like live next door to me? I'll buy you a house. That's right. Oh my gosh. I'm going to be the worst. Okay. But so I love it. Let me ask you this, Ryan, man. We, I know we're going to get off here. Tell people how they can find you, man. That cause, cause even talking to you, you're just like this easy spark of a guy to talk to, man. I, you've got a ton of energy. How can they read more? Uh, I know you've written a ton of books. You have a podcast. How can they connect with you? Uh, my website is rebelparenting.org. Yep. And it's an easy one. If you want to hear the podcast, it's literally, they're all right there. And by the way, any podcast distribution that you, I mean, Apple, I, you know, iTunes, Spotify, Google, Audible, we're everywhere. The podcast is everywhere. We do mostly podcasts. We have a, um, a newsletter. I'm not like, I will send stuff out, but like, don't expect like weekly stuff jam in your inbox. I don't yeah. like it. I'm not that guy. My fundraisers are like, you got to send more things out saying you want money. And I'm like, Ooh, but I hate that. So I won't be doing that to yeah. anybody. But the stuff I send out, like, uh, we had a program called the Rebel Upgrade, and we would do a month of 
uh, uh, study sheets for like Paul Tripp's parenting and Shanti Feldhan's uh, The Kindness Challenge. And so now we just give that stuff away. Like my wife and I are right now, we're going to record a podcast tomorrow on Paul Tripp's book, Parenting, and we're using the study guide we did. And then we just send it out to all of our newsletter people for free. Very cool. Um, it's got videos and like, because you don't have to like read the whole book. We'll just give you the heartbeats. It, but if you want to, that book will change your life. Mm. Like we do it today because it just, it radically is, I tell you, I don't like his cover. I tease him about it because it's like not me. I mean, look at me, you know, but I looked at that cover. I'm like, 14 gospel prints will radically transform your family. Is like, it like a, is it like a rocking horse or something right. on there? Or yes, something? totally. Yeah. Hardwood floors, yeah. wainscoting, the whole deal. Yeah. Like if you saw my audience, I collect vinyl, like I'm crazy, yeah. but that book, his subtitle is so true. It radically transformed my family. He is so of the whole, it's the greatest parenting book I've read in in a in yeah. a decade. Yeah, it's I'm a good so one. into it. Well, Ryan, yeah. you're a good man. I just I I, oh, I just so you. appreciate you, man. Your heart. I thank you for reminding parents that it's okay to not be okay and to say, you know what, Lord, yeah. I want I want to do this differently. I'm gonna really really enjoy my kids and being a parent. Totally. So thank you for taking the time to come on here. Just oh for my a few goodness today, man. Total, total, total honor. Anytime. It's been awesome. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode of Following to Lead. Uh, be sure to check out our show notes. Uh, we're always in putting in there links to resources in there, so make sure you check those out. Or you can find them on our website at followingtolead.com. Hey, uh, if you want to ever catch up with me personally, connect with me on Instagram at Kevin T. East or on Facebook. Or you can even find our Following to Lead with Kevin East Facebook site there as well. We're always posting uh, fun resources there as well. Hey, uh, let me leave you these last four words as I always do. Follow Jesus. Leave the Father.